Welcome to JP Bullhound's Tech Thoughts. Today is the 21st of January, and we are here with India Haydorn and Naila Salkovic for our weekly market roundup. Today, they will be covering news in the gaming and semi sectors with an update on Netflix Q4 numbers. Over to them. Thank you very much. And I'll start directly by apologizing uh, for my voice today, as I have a cold, but um, um, that's quite common these days. So let's go to the market. Uh, the market is really, really volatile for the moment. And I just want to highlight yesterday, 8 o'clock Central European time, Nasdaq is up 2% and the market ends down one and a half on really no news flow at all. So the market is really, really volatile for the moment. But I would say one thing to highlight is it's not just the interest rates. The second leg of the say, tech sell-off is also the worries about that we had uh, more of, of buying than expected during the COVID years and that we have some inventory congestions to, to work out during uh, the nor- more normalized times that are coming. So we'll talk more about that a little bit later when we argue uh, around the 4Q numbers of Netflix. But uh, let's move over to gaming and, and Naila. Thank you, Inge. Um And a little gaming update then. Um, Microsoft on Tuesday announced plans to acquire Activision Blizzard uh, in a deal worth nearly $70 billion. Uh, It's one of the biggest acquisitions in the tech industry in recent years, and one that will obviously boost Microsoft's standing in the growing gaming industry. Uh, The move is significant as it shows long expected consolidation in the gaming space and boosts Microsoft to be the third largest player in gaming behind Tencent and Sony, of course. Um, I believe this is a very smart deal from Microsoft's side as Activision had internal problems with sexual harassment and other internal issues which we have discussed before. Um, At the same time, shares in the gaming industry in general have been quite weak. Uh, So I would say that Microsoft is taking the chance now uh, when the situation situation is quite pressured for both Activision and the industry as a whole. Um, Despite this, I would still say that I don't think the offer is very high um, and the share price is of course lower than it was last summer. Um, But yes, at the same time, uh, we live in a completely different environment to date, um, six months later with the tougher pressure on technology stocks, etc. Uh, furthermore, the announcement came in about a week after Take-Two said it would acquire the mobile gaming company Singa for $12.7 billion. Um, this makes two of the biggest deals in this industry essential announced in a week. And this is super interesting and obviously something we're going to continue following. Um, I further believe that the gaming industry will get a boost after this, uh, which will show that there's so much value in these companies. That's all. Thank you. And over to Inge. Yes. um, Going over to the CME side, uh, probably the sector has been hardest hit in the last week. Uh, As you remember, we had TSMC coming out with guidance of 40 to 44 billion of uh, of CapEx this year. We have Samsung reporting next Friday, which will be quite bullish on, on CapEx and Intel will follow suit. So when ASML reported on strong numbers and and good guidance, uh, it was basically in line with expectation. But I think the thing that really stands out here is, firstly, they are sold out. Secondly, they are trying to improve uh, delivery times by doing the final testing at at the uh, client sites instead of their own factories to put up speed of deliveries. But even more importantly, they also saw the first order for the new tools coming out in 2025 from Intel. And, and those two are, tools are selling at around $300 million instead of the 160, 180 where we are today. So the demand is still there and still picking up, but we have seen a sell off of the industry. And, and I think it's two things really. Firstly, it has handle itself really strongly in in the downturn lately, so really not been dragged down. So this is like a mean reversal. And secondly, the story out is that the Chinese vendors for smartphones have some inventory going into the Chinese New Year now. And um, that's probably true. I don't think it's that large, but it's probably true. And it's going to drag down growth a little bit on the same side for Q1. But the congestion of that will uh, be eaten up quite quickly and we're still very, very positive for the semi industry for, for this year. Going over to the second part of the market update and the story is that 
people are worried about that we have like been always applying and over and been over demand for tech things going into or during the COVID and it's coming down now. And Netflix reported last night and, and at that number is over oh, 08 million for Q4, which is really in line with expectation and even slightly better than the, the expectation that's been coming down lately. But guidance for Q1 of, of around two and a half, it's clearly lower than expected. The market was acting five, six, probably whispering at around four. But on top of that, they're also guiding for higher costs due to US dollar strength and cost inflation in production. So the margin story, which has been the really strong story in, in Netflix for the last two years, is really on a halt now. They're saying even that margins could be falling a little bit this year, while the market was expecting at least one, two, or even 3% margin increases this year. So the stock is hampered last night, down 20% in the aftermarket. On top of that, you had the Peloton story coming out from CNBC that they are stopping production on some bikes and so on because of oh, lack of demand. And the stock was down 25% in the market yet last night. Uh, so um, not really great, great news. But um, that's how it is for the moment. And we're waiting for more results coming next week from the tech panel wearers. Thank you very much. Bye.